The Long-Legged Beast of the Magura Forest by Mike Jesus His sheepskin coat was covered with snow and mud. The rifle strapped across his back was broken in half. Without greeting us, he stumbled to the barkeep and demanded Palenka. What happened to you, Yosko? asked Halshin, his big belly bouncing with laughter. Got into a fight with that dog of yours? This got a couple of laughs from the men, but as soon as the woodsman turned around, all mirth disappeared from the room. Yosko was built like a bull and wore a true woodsman's beard, yet beyond the rough face, plain as day, we could all see he was terrified. The woodsman didn't answer. He just swallowed the barkeep's offering. It wasn't until the second shot that he spoke. There's something in the woods. Damn right there's something in the woods. A damn snowstorm. What the fool you are for walking around during the winter, Halshin said. But fool or not, come join us, let me buy you a drink. As soon as someone closes that damn door, you might actually find some warmth here. Outside, a mighty storm raged in the dying light of the afternoon. Peeking out of the curtain of snow were the outlines of the Magura Forest, a forest thick enough to be dangerous even on the brightest of summers. As the door closed, I quietly took pity on any man who would get lost in that wilderness. The woodsman took two more helpings of Palenka before he sat down amongst us. The liquor smelled heavy off of him, but as soon as he took off his coat, the room filled with the stench of sweat. Toyosko. Last week you sit here and brag about how you finished all the winter preparations a month early, but now we catch you getting lost in the forest. Never took you for a liar. Halshin boomed, hoping to get a response out of the woodsman. But his jabs didn't land. The man sitting before us was in no mood for arguments or jokes. What brought you to the forest, friend? Halshin finally asked with a hint of kindness in his voice. The woodsman stared into his beer as if it would provide answers to his torment. When no answers presented themselves, he started to speak. Buckle, he said. Ever since we finished the winter work, he has been anxious, kept on howling and biting his paws. Figured taking him out for a quick walk in the forest would help. Now you treat that dog like a child! Alshin hollered. You let that animal sleep in the house, and soon enough it feels entitled to complain. This got a couple of murmurs of agreement from the rest of the table. Bako, much like the rest of the village dogs, was a product of untraceable parentage or breed. Yet he wasn't treated like the simple farm animal he was. The woodsman seldom left the house without the dog, kept him by his side whenever he could. He would even converse with it when he thought no one was watching. Even though both the Hound and the Woodsman were well-liked, many crude jokes would be made on account of their relationship. Yet no one felt like joking that night. Where is Baco? someone asked. The Woodsman didn't answer. Instead, he took a dull swig of his beer. Getting out of the house helped, he said. As soon as we got to the forest, he was off like a cannonball. Jumping around in the snow, running back and forth on the path. Haven't seen him that happy all month. I wanted him to have his fun. Figured I would take him with me to check the feeder in the salt licks. The woodsman's words were hollow. It was as if his body was present in the pub, but his mind was still somewhere off in the forest. That's when I found the tracks. There's something in the woods. Ah, I understand now, Haushin said, grinning. You went out for some out-of-season hunting, Yosko. We're amongst friends here, so no one will report you. But if you do find yourself with some venison sausage, it would be a sin not to share. The rest of the table laughed hungrily. So you had a run-in with a bear. Is that what happened with your rifle? No, the woodsman said and took another heavy swig of his beer. The tracks did not belong to a bear, or a deer, or a boar, or anything else that roams our forest. It was something bigger, something heavier, 
Something taller. Taller? Someone asked. Taller. These tracks went deep. The legs that left them were tall. The tracks were still of hooves. Long, flat hooves. Thought that maybe I had come across some freak deer. Being a hard year, figured a bit of sausage would cheer everyone up. For a moment the woodsman smiled. For a moment our drinking buddy was back. But then his eyes glazed over. What we found wasn't a deer. Malbaco played in the snow, I followed the tracks. They ended up leading me all the way past the stream. They led to... The woodsman paused. It was as if he had suddenly became aware of who he was speaking to. He looked up at Halshin. They led to your fields. I trust my potatoes are doing well? Halshin laughed. Others laughed with him. No, the woodsman said, silencing the crowd. No, Halshin, your fields are... It's as if wild boars dug through everything you planted. Everything is dug up. There's mud everywhere. That's ridiculous, someone said. No boar is smart enough to dig through the snow. Is this true, Yosko? You're not pulling my leg? When the woodsman shook his head, all the joy left Halshin's eyes. For a moment, Halshin sat wordlessly, letting the anger fill his cheeks. What happened next? Who dug up my fields? Baco was too busy running around in the snow to notice the tracks. But when we reached the fields, there was no snow to play in. I tried to get him to follow a scent, to track down whatever animal destroyed your fields, but he didn't want to. The woodsman's voice jumped an octave. His dark eyes closed. Baco wanted to go home. See, this is what happens when you treat your dog like a child. Alshin slapped the table, nearly spilling his beer. You treat an animal like a man and they start to form opinions. That hound was meant to follow the scent. That hound was meant to lead you to the animals that wrecked my fields. He did, the woodsman said. Baco wanted to go home, but I forced him to follow the scent. I forced him to track down the animal. Good. Halshin said, calming. I have to remind the animal who is the master from time to time. Halshin looked beneath the table, as if he expected the dog to be there. But Baka was nowhere to be found. For a moment, it looked as if the man would ask about the dog, but he didn't. What did Baka find? He didn't want to lead me, but I insisted. The woodsman said, his head bent over his beer in sorrow. He led me through the muddy fields down to the valley below. For a while, I could see the tracks. I could see those long-legged hooves in the snow. But when we walked down the valley, the snow disappeared. All that was left was mud. Mud and fog. Bako kept on whimpering. He kept on looking back at me, begging me with his eyes to leave, but I didn't listen. I just kept them walking through the mud, hoping for some good meat. We were walking through the fog for about ten minutes when I heard it. I heard the animal, like the mating grunt of a deer, but darker. I heard it coming from above. Above? Someone asked. From the sky? Yosko, are you trying to tell us you saw a deer mating in the sky? No one laughed. Looking at the woodsman's terrified face, no one dared to laugh. The fog was far too thick to see through. I was barely able to keep track of Baco, but I could hear it. I could hear something groaning above us. At that point, even I was scared. I couldn't see anything. The dog was nervous, and whatever was out there in the fog was big. I tried to turn around. I was finally going to listen to Baco's instincts, but it was far too late. The woodsman attempted to continue his story, but no words left his mouth. 
He was still out there, out in the forest, trying to make sense of what him and his dog had seen. A round of blinkers on me, barkeep, how she nodded, breaking the tension for a split second. Yet, as the glasses of clear liquid were placed on the table, the pub descended back into complete silence. Everyone was waiting for the woodsman to speak. He remained wordless until he swallowed his medicine. The legs, he finally said. The legs were the first thing I saw. Tall, grey legs attached to a body that I could not see. Those skeletal limbs were enough for me. As soon as I saw them, I ran. I ran and Baco followed me, but we weren't alone. The beast ran behind us. Its steps were frantic and clumsy, but it moved fast. Even those disgustingly thin legs, it kept keeping up with us. And the groaning... The groaning kept on getting closer, as if whatever was making those horrible sounds was descending from the sky. Out of nowhere, the animal put on a burst of speed and overtook us. It nearly trampled us as it ran ahead. Then it stopped. A head descended from the fog on a sickeningly long neck. Eyes blacker than the darkest night. It long purple tongue and giant yellow teeth. Staring at me was a maddening snout of the beast I couldn't imagine in my worst nightmares. It foamed at its curled lips. It snapped its monstrous maw. The beast meant us harm. I squeezed one shot, went wide. By the time I loaded the next, the woodsman nodded to his rifle, propped up against the table. The barrel of the gun was crushed and bent, halved by a thick-toothed bite. There wasn't a second shot. I fell to the ground and that horrible head descended towards me. Even past the mist I could see those big, dark eyes. They weren't dumb. They weren't like the eyes of any animal I've ever seen. No. There was malice in those eyes. The beast wanted me dead, not because of hunger, not because of fear, but out of pure spite. For a moment I was sure my days had been numbered, but then... Baco, someone whispered. The woodsman drained his mug and nodded. He jumped at the beast's neck and tore into it. I didn't look back, I just ran. I abandoned him. I left Baco alone with whatever spawn of hell that creature was. All that could be heard was the howling of the wind outside. We were all trying to make sense of the woodsman's story, trying to figure out if the man had simply lost his mind in the forest, or whether there was any truth to what he had said. Halshin broke the silence with his fist. Baco died an honorable death for a dog, he said, slamming the table. He died serving his master. Barkeep, a round of palenka in the hound's honor. To murmurs of agreement, another round was poured. Before the glasses were raised, however, Halshin struck a gentle tone. Yosko, none of us here doubt your story, but you have to admit it is a difficult one to grasp. Impossible to grasp, I might say. To those of a more gentle nature. It has been a hard year. The last thing we need is the women and children being scared of some long-legged monster in the woods. I suggest to you and everyone gathered here that we not speak of this matter further. I am sure that whatever beast you encountered in the woods will not stay there for long. If there are still traces of it come spring, we can investigate the matter further. But as far as I am concerned, all you and Baco encountered in the woods was a restless bear. The table turned to the woodsman. We all studied his blank face in search of a response. Yes, the woodsman said after a long moment of thought. Let us not speak of this further. Tobacco, Alshin said. Tobacco, we all cheered. 
Once the glasses were drained and slammed down on the wood, another wave of silence followed. No one knew what to say. Surely it was no time to cast doubt on the woodsman's story, and it was most definitely no time to make jokes. But conversations around the village pub seldom revolved around anything other than humor or distrust. He was a good dog, the woodsman whispered. The others started to murmur their agreement, but suddenly everyone went quiet. There was a scratch at the door. Something was trying to get inside of the pub. What was that? Someone said. Behind us, the barkeep's shotgun cocked into action. He was aiming straight at the door. The fear in the room was palpable. What once seemed like the fever dream of a man lost in the woods now seemed like an undeniable reality. There was something outside, and it wanted in. The force on the door grew more erratic. With each second, I could feel the sanity draining out of everyone in the room. We were all thinking of the long-legged monstrosity that the woodsman had described. We were all fearing for our lives. But then the scratches were joined by another sound. A familiar sound. Behind the door, a dog whimpered. Boko! The woodsman yelled as he leaped to his feet and rushed the door. You're alive! The dog was alive, but barely. Baco's fur was matted in blood, and he scarcely managed to stay upright on his paws. Whatever struggle Baco had emerged from was a brutal one. The pub immediately mobilized into a flurry of activity. Within seconds, the injured dog was wrapped up in the woodsman's coat and carried out into the night. In the spirit of communal support, or morbid curiosity perhaps, the whole pub followed the woodsman to the village veterinarian. Soon, Halshin and I were the only ones left in the pub. You think the woodsman was telling the truth? I asked. Yosko has a strange relationship with his dog, Halshin said, waddling over behind the bar and grabbing a bottle of Planka. But I do not take him for a liar, nor a madman for that matter. The thought of some long-legged monster hiding in the woods, though. As the rest of the men trudged through the snow and darkness, hoping to save Baco, Halshin poured two shots of the clear liquid. Let me once again suggest that we do not speak of this matter until spring. Whether there is or isn't something in the forest right now is not of our concern. It is the winter. It has been a hard year. Let us simply tend to our homes and enjoy the fruits of our labor. He handed me the glass. I accepted it. At least the dog is alive. At least the dog is alive. And then, in a little bastion of civilization surrounded by a dark forest, we drank. Please be sure to follow the link in the description to the author's page. They are also a narrator and have kindly allowed me to do their story. But if you can't wait, they've done a rendition themselves. Follow the link in the description.